What's up folks, welcome back to another video. In this entire playlist, we're going to build an entire Marine Stack application all the way from start to finish until we get this guy to Heroku. If this is your first time on this channel, this is where we help you become a full stack developer. So if you're new here, consider subscribing and we'll be right with you after the pause. Before we start, let me give you guys a demo on how this works. Again, this is a very simple application. The goal behind this is we want to show you guys how to connect every single piece together until we get it to Heroku. So this is a post app where you can add a post. For example, here we can write a title for our post. I'm going to call this one second post and I'm also going to add a message to it. And we have something very basic. And if I click submit post, I can see that's being saved. And if I click OK, I can see now my second post being added. Again, all of this is being saved into to our database MongoDB. And if I will load this page, I can see them coming from, from the database. All right, before you start, make sure that you have the Create React app installed into your computer. If you don't know if you have it, you can come here and type the word Create React app and type the word dash dash version. And if you see a version, that means that you do have the Create React app available for you. Once that's out of the way, let's go inside the desktop. So I'm inside the desktop. I'm going to create a folder called Mern app. And this is, I'm gonna go inside that folder and this is where I'm gonna be building my entire Mern stack application. Once I'm here, I'm going to type this command to open this into VS Code. And there you go. This is inside VS Code. All right. So once I'm inside VS Code, I'm going to go here and create one file called server.js. And server.js is going to be the starting point of where my application is going to be. All right. Once I'm here, I'm going to go inside my terminal and I'm going to use the Create React app. I'm going to create a React application inside a folder called Client. All right. If everything has gone as expected, you should at least see something like this in your terminal. And ladies and gentlemen, our React application should create this client folder with everything inside of it. Now, to verify this work, I'm going to go back inside my terminal. I'm going to navigate inside of wherever that React application is, which is inside the client folder. And once I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and do npm start to verify that this application works. Boom, everything seems to be running. And ladies and gentlemen, our React application has successfully built that client folder with this view for us. So technically, we are done on that part. The second thing I want to do is I want to start building a couple of things for my server. So if you guys remember, we do have that server file. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a packet that JSON. I'm going to go here and use that Y command to automatically answer all the questions as yes. And we should have that packet that JSON that looks like this. Now for this entire application, I'm going to download a total of five packages. The first one is going to be called Mongoose, Express, Axios, Morgan, and Concurrently. And I'm going to use that flag to save them as a dependency. Now, if you don't know what every single one does, don't worry, we're going to walk you guys through and explain them every single one of them in details whenever we are using them. But for the sake of this tutorial, just keep in mind, we need a total of five different packages in order to build this entire Mern stack application. Once that's done, I'm going to go back inside the server file. I'm going to go here and start importing a couple of things. I'm going to start getting something called Express. I'm going to import the Mongoose one that we install. I'm also going to import the Morgan package as well that we install. Lastly, but not least, I'm going to install a built in module that we did not install called path. We don't need that extra one. So the bottom line is this one itself. It's something that we did not install. If we take a look at here, all these packages does not include path. This one is a built in node module that come with Node.js as long as you do have Node.js installed. All right, once we have this, I'm going to go here and start defining a couple of things. First thing first, we're going to initialize an express application. Second, I'm going to define final port here using the process that port and we're going to set this one to be set at port 80. Again, all this one is doing, we're going to talk about it deeply, but this particular one, it is something that we need whenever we are deploying our application to Heroku to say that, Hey, Mr. Heroku, we want you to run our application on your port because there is a chance that port 8080 is not available on Heroku. So once we have that, I'm going to go here and do app that use right here. I'm going to select that app that use and I'm going to start using one package in particular called Morgan. And I'm going to walk you guys to what Morgan is in a second. So I'm just going to do Morgan.tiny. Now, the big question is, what is Morgan? Morgan is something that we don't actually need it to build this entire Mern stack application. We could have gone ahead and delete it. However, it is an HTTP request logger, which means every single HTTP request that we make, it is going to log it for us inside our terminal for us to see what routes that we are hitting. 
again, that might not make sense for now, but as we're gonna go through, we're gonna show you how Morgan itself works within this app. So once we have that, I'm gonna go here and start defining a couple routes. So I'm gonna go define a couple, get route. Gonna send a very simple JSON back to the client. I'm gonna store some data here, something like very basic. We don't need something fancy, such as username could be Axiom Sterling, and then possibly the edge could be five. And then once we have that, we're gonna send that back as a JSON. So, so again, all we're doing here is we're defining that route. And I'm gonna set this route to start at something called slash API. I can set a different route here, such as something called slash a name, and we can rename this one to be something Peterson, just to make sure that this work. Again, all we're doing here is we are defining some routes inside our server. So once we have that, the last thing that we need to do is something called app that listen. We're gonna have that one listen on that port. If you remember, this is the port that we define above. So we're gonna have this one listen on that port, and then we're just gonna go here and console and log every every single request that is coming in. We're gonna name this one server is starting at whatever port that we defined earlier, When this case is going to be port 8080, which is local. Now, one thing to pay attention here is I'm not using a single code. I'm actually using backtit, which is the key on your keyboard that is on top of the tab uh, on, on your keyboard. Again, this is what I'm using in order to log this message. Now, to verify that this works, I'm gonna go here and run node server in order for me to run the Node.js server and latency in general mean my server is starting and now if I go inside my browser go on that port 8080 and go to slash API and there you go ladies and gentlemen I'm getting the data back from my server and if we go here here's the route that we had and if I go to this one such as slash slash name click enter and we have a different name for our user so so far our routing is working accordingly now before we go any further let's take a quick look here remember with all these packages so far we are using this package called Morgan and all it is is an HTTP HTTP request logger, which means every single request that the browser is sent, then is going to log it to our console. Now check this out. Now down here, we got a couple requests from the browser. We got this one slash API, which returned 200. And this is 2.190 millisecond that it takes in order for it to send a response back. So what does that mean? That means if I go back into the browser and make any HTTP request, such as if I go here and type a different route, then this automatically going to be logged into our console in order to see which route that our user are going to in order for us to see if this would exist 404 mean this does not exist we do not have a routes like this on our server and then the timing is how long it takes in order for us to send a response back before we go any further let's take a quick look and see what we have so far right so we've gone ahead and installed a total of five different packages so if we take a look at here this is all the five packages that we install and we kind of go here and set up something into our server we set up a couple route we also configure our HTTP logger, we import all these packages, and then we start our server. And then we have a React application that is running on port 3000. But check this out, right? There's two things here that's very important. Number one, in order for us to run both of the application, we are running them in two different terminals. So this one is one terminal that is running the server application, and this one is another terminal that is just running the React application. What if there was a way that we can run both of them at the same time into just one terminal together. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna see how we can do that in the next video.